Good day, YouTubers, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls from all around the world. We begin a new era model building. Soriel Royale. The um, plans and the box opening <clears throat> are going to be part of what we discover today. Now, on this CD, the uh, plans are all electronic. Um, there is one sheet of reference for the laser cut pieces. And then a sheet I printed out for um, some codes that they translate that's used throughout the instructions for what to do in the instructions. So. Just a quick overview of what's on the CD and the uh, massive amount of research we got to do. Um, we're in the parts list file now, and it just goes on and on and on. <clears throat> You'll see after I get past all the laser cut plywood stuff then we got laser cut and etched metal brass and stainless steel then there's flags then there's a bunch of pewter pieces the sails and now we're getting down to the little items that you'd find in the box all your uh, different sizes of lumber and what the code is for them the codes over there um, has round stock for the mast and yards and then more pewter tons of pewter stuff that we've got to uh, work with. This ship has got quite a bit of decoration on it, which is going to be a challenge. And then there's um, little people that came in the kit. Now, the uh, actual build instructions is a different file. <clears throat> as you go through the build instructions you'll uh, reference back to the parts list so in the beginning of the build instructions there's um, extra tools and supplies you can purchase we might get that drill bit set I do have a lot of drill bits but having one that you can do by hand might be handy every now and then we do have a heater iron for bending the wood and I did purchase this uh, rigging tool when I bought the model so we have that but we don't have any of these shaping tools for shaping uh, wood I might I might get that and then another thing I might get is there's a, a lighting set specifically designed for this model it's got a light up on the mizzen mast I think and then there's two lanterns in the back and I'm sure because these are all the LEDs here it's like probably 12 of them or more um, there's gonna be light somewhere else too I'm not sure this is the code reference that I printed out so I can refer to it quickly. And then the beginning of the build instructions. So these numbers here are represented in the parts list. And then these things up here tell you what to do and, and that's on that code sheet. 
so that particular one means fit together and this one means glue so we find that part number and we fit it together and glue it <clears throat> and every now and then there's a video in the middle of this <clears throat> assembly instructions and you can click on the video and you can watch a little video to help you out so with the combination of the build instructions and the parts list go back up near where these parts are at that we were just looking at in the instructions um, this monitor that I'm working with here is on a laptop I'm thinking I'm gonna have an HDMI cable and go to a bigger screen so it's not near as hard to see these items and their numbers and stuff and uh, put that screen near where I'm working so I can reference back and forth to the different uh, views and then another item that's of interest here on this CD there's um, a file for the figurines and what they should look like after they're assembled and painted and then there's several videos on uh, different techniques and assembly process and um, things that uh, would help you while you're building and then there's a gallery of pictures so all together there's like 900 different photographs and videos to work with and uh, we know it's going to be a, a challenge but with this laptop and a bigger monitor which I'm going to just got this out of the kids room they're they're not using it and it does look like a smart TV it's got an HDMI outlet on it I'm gonna turn the lights on in here and this laptop's got an HDMI outlet on it so I should be able to HDMI that smaller view over to this bigger screen so it would be easier to work with and then maybe we'll mount that screen over near our work area or something depending on what we start up doing <clears throat> and I moved the uh, bounty into the house just to get it out of the way here in the shed and cut the lid of the box off the sides we we'll use that when we build the case and similar to the the San Juan here we put that box lid behind the ship so you can see some of the specs and so forth along with the model so the box opening process we'll start with next. Um, I'm going to gear up these tables so that we can get this stuff spread out and uh, see what's inside that box in a little more detail. Now that you've seen some of the instructions um, you're, we're just getting a little taste of what's to come because those instructions, once you get into the complicated stuff, are very in-depth. And the pictures look very clear and concise and in color. So I'm going to be much appreciated to work with that as opposed to a black and white plan on a piece of paper. So let me gear up these tables and... Uh, get started on the box opening. Let's see Royal Soil Yield. 
So ill. So ill. <laughs> Comes with little people. Dear Roger, many thanks for your order. Best regards. Artesia Latina. Ten percent off code. Hmm. Maybe I can use that for some more of these tools in the light kit. After I did the bounty, I knew I was putting my own lights in. I thought, well, why should I order a light kit for the Soria Royale when I just did one for custom made one for the bounty maybe I can do that here so I didn't order one just because of that but after looking at the plans it shows them lights inside the lanterns on the back of the ship and then there's a lantern up on the mizzen mast and <clears throat> for the price of that kit I think it would be uh wise to go ahead and purchase it instead of trying to fabricate everything oh, the camera's bouncing around because my table's touching it <clears throat> so the pewter parts will get painted blue and gold and brown and stuff Then we got a whole bunch of pewter decoration, anchors, yeah, it's going to be a lot of painting and decorating as we go along. Before we get to any rigging, more decorations. Oh, paddles for the long boats and the life lifeboats. Mm, I didn't have paddles on the other one. And I think this has got, I'm going to have to look at the specs again, but I thought it was like 80 cannons. Or that's what the San Juan was. This one might even have more. Yeah, we'll have to count those up. I think there's more than 80 cannons on this one. You got some of the real ones that are up on the deck. And then these stick out through the holes in the lower decks. And there's some of the people. Uh, and that looks like what you put LED light inside of. Those look like little glass lenses with a base pewter base interesting i've already opened this one i haven't opened the other ones yet but i did open this one because while looking through the instructions and the parts list i said where is all my blocks set and the pulleys and blocks and tackles. And here they are. But you know what that means? We got to drill a hole in every one of these. And there's 220 of these 5 millimeter ones. And there's 66 of the 4 millimeter ones. 
that we got to make a jig for and set up a drill bit in the drill press or something that we can um, productively knock these out because we're going to have to drill a hole in them for the running rigging and the standing rigging ropes. There's not a hole in the blocks except for the ones here in this box. And that's not enough blocks to build the ship. So these are the rest of the blocks, the normal ones that you would use in the mass amounts. But we got to set up a jig to drill holes in them for the ropes. And they got cannonballs, eye bolts, two different size eye bolts, some little uh, hold down brackets. I bet you those brackets are for the cannons that mount in the cannon holders. And that's for the rudders. Those are bearings for the uh, yard arms to the mast. Some pins. Some wire. But this is going to be a tough one here. <clears throat> in the process of looking at the instructions and the parts list discovered that the reference back and forth between the two is quite often in order to um, get the right part and get it in the right position glue it and whether or not you need to paint it and a lot of back and forth So Eel Royale, wow, look at those windows and all these little pieces. They're all labeled on there, so we just got to find them when we go to look at the parts list and the instructions as we go along. This is stainless steel pieces. And that looks like for the cannon holders. Interesting. More decorations. Pieces you gotta. I was discovering in the instructions some of these pieces you would bend and they would be on the front of the ship in the bow area and some of them other places. And I saw this in the instructions too. <clears throat> they had a little photograph reference to a template. And there's a template. And that is for the cannon holes on the side of the ship. And I guess you reverse it for the other side. So this hole is going to be a little bit bigger than that one. Should have gloves on when I handle this stuff. Oh my gosh, look at all them pieces. Is that encouraging or what? I would assume this is blackout for the back of the windows. Some kind of mylar or something. Lots of laser cut lumber. Yeah, this is plywood. Probably two and a half, three millimeters. That 
looks more like those stainless steel pieces there, doesn't it? Yeah. I wonder what you do with those. This is the substructure, and I guess you face it with that piece in the stainless steel. Hmm. I'm not sure what this is, but it looks like some material with a sticky back. It might be clear. That ought to be interesting. More decorations, more clear. We might find that some of these actually are decals for a substrate material that goes underneath them. That ain't, I don't think that's a flag, is it? Oh yeah, the big one might be a flag. And the small one might be a small flag. Go on the top of the ship or something. And here's some reference sheets for all the laser cut plywood. Reference numbers. That's good to have it on paper. You definitely want to make sure you're picking the right part. And there's info on both sides. This looks like all wood. Plywood, 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 plywood. There's a combination of round stock and some regular square and rectangle shaped lumber. Shaping and cutting and painting. That's one of three. This is some real thin stuff here. This is probably going to be the planking on top of the planking. And then that's regular planking. Good grief. Hundreds and hundreds of boards. There's the dead eyes. Then uh, other kit, they were already punched out and I wouldn't be surprised if you got to glue two together to make one. Good grief. These look like the base for the crow's nest. <clears throat> yep, those are top crow's nest framing members. And then a top and a base for the crow's nest.
And all these pieces, I don't know what they are yet. Never built one like this before. Oh, pre-made. <clears throat> pre-made grills. That's a nice change. <clears throat> See, in the past, we would have to assemble those grills. And then shape them and all. And that was a pain in the butt. This is going to be nice. Much more uniform looking. Those would go on the decks to uh, access hatchways to access the below deck levels. Now we're getting into some thicker stuff here. These are going to be some of the larger members in the framing. Here's some of the hull pieces. I imagine that's keel maybe. Rudder. Now these are going to be some of the framing members for the side of the ship. Now with that notch there, it tells me that this framing member has a beam going up the side of the ship that your planking would mount to. Also is accepted in the notch of a piece that goes to the bottom of the ship where the keel is. And that's the last one there. Of the thicker lumber. That's at least four or five millimeters. And we're probably going to start when we do the assembly starting. We're going to be starting with these larger pieces. This is going to be our base to hold the ship. Yep. So that is the beginning of trouble. stuff has got to get departed and assembled. You don't want anything to get bent or separated from its home base until we're ready for that. kit and the tools to go with this. And I was able to get this other monitor up and going. So that gives us a good much larger view compared to my hand how big the, the view is so it's going to be a lot easier to see and then I got a 
15 foot HDMI cable so we can move this monitor over away from the laptop and it'll help us see better what we're looking at. I got all these lights on in the shop. Let me turn them off. Sometimes when you're looking at a monitor from a YouTube video, shutters and does all kind of weird stuff. But yeah, that's a lot better to see with. Let me get down here where some of the rigging is. There's tons of decorations. There's the beginning of the mast. <clears throat> And this goes on the bow spirit. Bow sprit. Yep, so the bow sprit's going to have a vertical. Crow's nest. See lots of detail. Lots of pieces to assemble. Paint, that's another problem. A lot of painting before you can build, which means you got dry time. And dry time means you have to organize your build process so you can overlap one project with another to count for dry time so you can stay busy. Let's go down a little lower. Here's some of the rigging. Oh, a little box of cannonballs for each cannon. Yeah, and that's what I was talking about before with the light kit. We got the wires for the light that's up on that mast hidden in a piece of wood that's got a groove cut in it for the wire and then glued and wrapped to the side of the ship or the side of the mast so the wires are not visible. So we got to get that kit before we get too much further into the build. That's some more of those wires there, I think. Which means there might be a lantern on the side of the ship there or something. I don't know. Here's some detail on the dead eyes. All those pieces are brass and we're going to have to paint them black or etch them. I have done, I've never done a, an etching to brass, so um, something i got to learn. I think it would be better than painting it. You might be able to just stain it or lay them all out and put a light coat of spray paint on it. There's a lot of options, but we need to do that in order to get the bottom dead eye installed into that rack where the dead eyes mount. So that's going to be a lot of work. More cool stuff on the deck. And 
There's some rigging. So the seven millimeter double block is some that are already drilled out for us. It tells us what to do, how long to make the tail, and then where it's going to mount. So each block is going to have a pretty in-depth groups of photographs and information to help you build. Which we didn't get with the, the previous Artesia Latina models. There was no detail like this at all. Now we get a lot more detail. So these are wires, electrical wires for the lights. I wonder if we're going to hide a battery box or something in there. I haven't looked at that yet. I need to look at that. But this is very encouraging, the amount of detail just on the standing rigging alone. that we're going to get with this build compared to the other older versions. <clears throat> it's, it's not that the kits are the same, they're not, because the older versions were in paper and the engineering was, you know, made for shipwrights and we're not shipwrights, we're model builders. Now we have enough information that we don't guess what goes where and how long it's got to be. Oh, look at that. That's a jig similar to the jig we made for the bounty. So you can get the right spacing on your top dead eye and the shroud tie off point before you lace up the dead eye. What do you know? So they provide that as a part in the laser cut stuff. They tell us how to make the dead eye and everything. So as you can see, we have got a lot of work ahead of us. Ah, what's that? That looks like a button cell battery holder. And they're hooking them all together. And they'll put them in this little house. And then when their battery goes dead, you can pull the roof off the house. And put a new battery in there. There must be a button on there to turn it on and off. So yeah, that's the uh, battery holder. For the lights. <laughs> and they got a little wire cover out of wood where it crosses the deck. We might do that a little different. There's shrouds and standing rigging. Okay, so I don't want to bore you anymore with this because there's a lot of detail here. A lot of work ahead of us, but we are very happy with these instructions. And the parts list is very detailed. So we won't be guessing what the part is that we're looking for. We just got to go by size and that number is in the instructions for building so RD7 
is an 8 millimeter by 350 millimeter round stock that will do something too to make it build. I am going to look at the dead eyes a little more to verify whether or not Yeah, somewhere in here, I think I saw we got to drill a hole in those. Drill a hole in those dead eyes. There they are there. And that means somewhere after major construction is done, we're going to start tying blocks. And yeah, that's the piece of wood that's going to go up inside the mass with the wires in it. And then gets wrapped with a rope and the wires hang out. There they are. The five millimeter blocks get drilled out. Lovely. Drill. I can't remember what R is. I think that's sand. R times 220. It means we got to do R 220 times. Oh boy. Well, as for the box opening, and all the things we have to look forward to, today is Tuesday. I want to do a little more homework on these instructions and parts list before I start gluing up framing members. So I don't know if I'll be back this week with more video. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. You never know. Okay, we have officially changed everything in the floor plan here. Got our monitor mounted in the main workbench. Started our first glue ups. Got the uh, first two pieces glued together. For the framing of the hull and we got the glue up done on the bracket that's going to hold the ship while we're working on building it got all our parts figured out what is what what is where These first two pieces here, we used a uh, 
square block to clamp and uh, got some glue on there made sure that was square as it was drying and that takes care of step one and step two and you can see in the instructions on the screen there To uh, <clears throat> locate the pieces, and then the next thing we'll be working on is the other framing member that's going to go on next. It looks like it's going to be three pieces glued together before it glues into the part here, which is probably going to be right there. Because that's number three. But there's one and two. The beginning of the Surreal Royale. So. It has started. Under construction. It's our little base station. We got an HDMI cable hooked to this laptop going over to that monitor so we can see while we're working over there. Everything in detail and a much bigger, much better screen color. We can zoom in and out. Thanks for watching.